Right, so what I want to show you is how to wire up some LED strips to a naze board. Uh, so here's a naze board without any pin headers. And there's basically a few connectors on the side here. We're going to use one of these, which is uh, five over here. Uh, so it's the second one in from the left. We're also going to use power and ground. I'm going to solder some other pin headers on here. Um, this is basically the LED strip output is number five. These are some LED strips. They basically have one end. And what's important to note here is that there's ground, data in, and five volts. And there's a little arrow on it. So on some of these strips that you get, the arrow is actually printed backwards. So just double check that you're going to be soldering the nays and connecting that up to the data in. And then when you chain the LEDs, you take the data out, which is on the other end, and then go to a, a data in on the next strip like so. So they would go like that. Um, you can use um, pin headers on these which basically sort of go on like that. You can solder those on or you can solder them directly. I find the pin headers convenient for doing testing and when you're rebuilding quads after crashing and things like that. Anyway, so here goes. I've got a soldering iron. I'm just going to quickly stick one of these on and we'll see how I get on. I haven't done any soldering on video before so this will be fun. So, important to use solder with a decent amount of flux. There we go, so he's on there. Then we get pin header. And that's basically on there. Thus, just focus that like so. And I'm going to do a couple more of these just so that we can chain them together. He's on there. So that's one done. I'm just going to do one more. Let me pause the camera so I don't bore you to death. There we go. It wasn't that exciting. There we've got three strips all ready to go. So now I'm going to solder some headers onto the naze board. So we've got some blobs of solder on the edge, one side and the other there. And I'm going to solder that one in place first. I'm using colour coded pin headers because it makes life a bit easier. That's one done. That's two done. All right, that's one side done. Let's flip them over and do the other side. There we go. We've got some pin headers attached. You might also notice I've also got a debug port attached to this already as well. Um, while I'm here, there's two pins on the bottom here. Um, here they are, SDA and SCL. I'm going to attach some pin headers to those as well. With the pin headers, these are quite large, but they're convenient. Um, these are way bigger than these. So what I'm going to do is bend the end of these down at about um, 15 degrees or so, 15, 20 degrees, and then solder them on and then glue gun them on as well so that they don't move around. OK, here we go. Now you can see the pin headers that are slightly bent on one end. So 
it's not straight anymore. That's about the angle you want. What it looks like with the I2C pin headers on the board. You do have to be a bit careful with these because you don't want to pull them off. Um, I mount them like that so that when you put the board in your aircraft, you can basically still slide a connector onto this um, quite happily um, without it like sticking downwards too far. So there we go, that's that. Next job. There. So we can see I've got color-coded headers on the motor output pins, the receiver pins, the LED strip pin, I2C pins, and battery telemetry and buzzer pins over here as well. So let's go and hook up some LED strips. So the next thing to do is go onto the internet and download Clean Flight Configurator to your machine. You want to do that bit again. So when you've downloaded it and installed it, it looks like this. Now, down here, I've got the NASE board. It's plugged in. I'm using a USB adapter to supply voltage to the NASE board so that on the pins over here, I get output when I'm using those to power the LED strip. Um, you can use any of the um, the 5 volt and ground pins to supply um, the LED strip. I'm just using these because they're next to each other. And underneath here, you can see that I'm using pin 5 with the yellow wire on pin 5 here. If I can get the camera to focus. Not very easy because it's black. There we go. So we can see I've got that connected to pin 5. Right, so that's all good. So the next step is to make sure that uh, after you plug your nays in, it sees the serial port. So make sure it's got the right serial port at the top. Go into the firmware flasher. Go down to load firmware. That updates the display over here. And then click flash firmware. And then it flashes it. Thus, and then after that, we should see it doing its normal initialization sequence followed by the three beeps. After it's done the three beeps, connect up to it, and you should see this. And if you move the board around, it moves it around over here, which is all good. Then pop into the CLI tab, and you want to enable the LED strip by going feature LED underscore strip and then save sorry not save um, the next thing you need to do is enable it so that you've got either parallel PWM so that you disable parallel PWM output because the pins 1 to 8 here are normally used for PWM, PWM input by default um, so we need to change this one so that it's an output but in order to do that, we need to disable parallel PWM either by enabling um, software um, RX serial or by enabling RX PPM. So I'm just going to enable RX PPM. There we go. All right, and then you save it, and it does its usual rebooting. And as you can see, we've got some LEDs doing their thing. And that is basically how you get the LED strips up and running on it. I almost forgot to mention, uh, this particular LED strip was supplied to me today by uh, Fabiano from uh, radioc.co.uk. So big thanks to him for supplying me these. Um, yeah, okay, cool. One last thing. I forgot to uh, tell you guys how do you connect one strip to another. So if you remember, I soldered data in at this end and data out headers at the other end. So to connect it up to the next one, find the one that's got data in. You see here I've got data out, which is incorrect. So I'm going to flip that round, connect up to connect to the ground up, connect the data in. There we go, and connect up the five volts, like so. Then I'm going to get the other end of those colour coded wires. I highly recommend the colour coding, it makes your life a lot easier. And connect the black one up to ground. Thus. And the data out on this end goes to the data in that we just connected on the second set of LEDs. 
and then the five volts on the five volts line. There we go. Thus. So, um, there were 10 LEDs on this strip, and there's also 10 on this one. Now, the default configuration for CleanFlight is to configure the first 12 LEDs. So, what we're expecting to see when I power this on is these two LEDs here um, be in their default configuration, and then I'll quickly show you how to configure another LED from the command line as well. Okay, so now that we've got power to all the LEDs, we can see that the last set of LEDs on the strip of 20 are white. This is because this is they're still in their sort of test mode. Um, all the LEDs are initialized to white. Um, so if you have a strip of 32 and you plug it in, all the ones that are unconfigured will be white. Um, this is just so that you can test each LED works in your strip, so it helps debug wiring things uh, without you having to do any configuration first. So let's configure the 13th LED so that it's a rear-facing LED um, to make it red. So we'll pop into the configurator again, go over to the CLI, and we'll go into the LED command like this. And we'll see that LED 12 here, which is the 13th one because it's a zero-based index, uh, is unconfigured. It's got 0, 0, colon, colon. Uh, all the LEDs are arranged on a 3x3 three three grid in the default configuration. You can have numbers, um, this is an X comma Y, up to 0 to 15. Um, so 0 by 0 is north west, and 3 by 3 or up to 15, 15, depending on the size of your grid, will be south east. So the ones that are north facing that have got the flight mode will be white. The ones that are rear facing that have got um, a flight mode on will be uh, red and then there's various other colors for the various different positions and so on. This is all in the documentation So check it out if you get confused. So we're gonna issue a command to configure it. Here's one I've prepared earlier um, So we're going to configure LED 12 so that it's one across and two down on the grid and it's south facing and it's going to have the flight mode so when I hit return on this we should see it change from white to red. If I actually press return, that is. There it goes. Uh, so that's how you configure an LED. So now I can mount that on the quad in the appropriate place, and I've got a, another indicator light. Another orientation light, rather. There you go. Enjoy. Right, so while I'm at it, I figured I'd show you guys how to wire up one of the displays. These ones you can get from Banggood and they're about like four pounds or something ridiculously cheap. They've got four pins on them, uh, ground, voltage, SCL and SDA. These are I2C clock and data pins. There we go, we can see those. So on the bottom of the nays, earlier in the video, I soldered on these two pins here, the blue one and the white one, connected up to SCL and SDA as before. So we're going to hook these up. So I've got a white cable on the white connector, blue cable on the blue connector. Then we're going to have a red and a brown one with two pins over here for the supply voltage. And we're going to connect those up. So I've got supply voltage and ground thus. And then I've got my blue one, which was the clock, which goes on the clock one, SCL. And then SDA, which was the white one, which goes on there. We'll double check that. So I've got red, red, VCC, ground, black, ground. Then I've got white, SDA, SDA, white, blue, SCL, SCL. Right, so we're all good. So, um, often you need, uh, with I2C uh, devices, pull-up resistors um, to get a clean signal. Um, I've checked on this already using my oscilloscope, and um, the signal is fine. Um, if you get garbled display or an issue with the display, try changing the um, pull-up resistors or adding additional pull-up resistors. The pull-up resistors basically will just connect the clock to the 5 volts and the SCL to the 5 volt supply. 
Um, start with high values, work your way down to lower values, um, and see if the corruption goes, if you get corruption. I haven't had any such corruption issues with these ones, but here we go. So, try and get this so that it doesn't fall over, which is easier said than done. Impossible, in fact. We need a weight on it. There we go. Right, so we're going to power up the nays. And we've also got a supply connected there. You can see my LED strip turned on. There we go. Right, so now what we're going to do is pop into the configurator again and hit up the CLI tab and then enable feature display thus and then save and then if we look back down at the display we'll see that it's powered up and working and that is basically all there is to hooking up one of these little display units and there's uh, upcoming code to um, do various different things, but at the moment it shows you battery voltage, sensors, as you can see there, you've got accelerometer and mag. And then we've got the uh, receiver inputs as well. And it also shows you the profile and the rate profile. There's many more things to add. It's actually really simple to get stuff to be added onto this display if you want to add extra code in there and get involved with the project. It's a, it's a good place to start actually. Okay, enjoy.